Hello everyone. In this video, let us understand biasing in BJT, why biasing is required and different types of biasing. First of all, what is biasing and why it is needed? As we know, BJT can be used as amplifier. So basically amplifier is a device that increase the power of the signal. If you apply a time varying input signal, that is AC signal, which is to be amplified, which is called as a small signal. And this signal will be get amplified into a large voltage or current at the output of the amplifier. But from where actually this amplifier get an extra voltage to amplify the small signal that is by biasing that is through the external DC voltage we are going to apply to the amplifier. So transistor biasing is a process of setting the transistor DC operating voltage or current conditions to the correct level so that AC signal can be amplified by the trans by the amplifier. So we need to keep this BJT or we need to bias the BJT to be operate in a Q point which we are going to get when the transistor is operating in the active region of operation. There are three configurations we can use BJT as amplifier. So in the first case you can see common base configuration where out of three terminals base terminal will be act as a common terminal between the input and output and we are going to apply the input from the emitter terminal and amplifier output will be taken from the collector terminal. If this is the case we call it as common base configuration. Similarly we have common emitter configuration where emitter is common between the input side and the output side where base will be act as input terminal and collector will be act as output terminal. And we have one more configuration called common collector configuration where collector is the common terminal, a base will be an input terminal and from the emitter we are going to measure the output. So these three configurations have advantages as well as disadvantages but the preferable configuration and the reliable most reliable configuration is common emitter configuration and this common emitter configuration circuit will be taken for the analysis of different biasing methods. So as I said BJT regions of operation are active region, cutoff region and saturation region. To make that BJT to be used in amplifier circuit or it should be act as amplifier we are supposed to bias the two junctions that is emitter base junction to be forward biased and collector base junction to be reverse biased then we say it will be in active region. We can use the BJT as amplifier. So now let us look into the biasing methods. The first one is fixed bias and we also call it as base bias. As the name itself says fixed bias in the sense a parameter are going to be made fixed to a value. Base bias in the sense that parameter will be there at the base of the device. So which is the parameter we are going to keep it here as fixed in the sense that is IB. IB is the input current here. We are making this IB constant by providing a constant RB that is resistor through VCC. Means the thing is we need to make this base emitter junction forward biased. To make this base to emitter junction forward biased we need to bring a voltage VBE like this means this base voltage to be positive. So we are applying for an NPN transistor we are applying positive terminal of the voltage to the P terminal and collector to base to be reverse biased so it is N region and we are applying the positive voltage itself. So by using this VCC and a constant resistor it by choosing a constant RB we can make this IB constant. This is the DC bias voltage from base so that we can make this transistor to operate as amplifier. So if you look at the analysis by applying KVL to the base circuit. Base circuit means from VCC from point A then base of the transistor to the ground. So if we apply KVL in this region VCC minus IBRB this is there is a voltage drop here we call it we are taken it as minus IBRB 
and then here from here to here we will be having an voltage VBE minus VB is equal to 0. This is the voltage expression we are going to get. If we rearrange that expression to get an expression for IB, so IB RB is equal to VCC minus VBE. What is the expression for IB now? IB is equal to VCC minus VBE divided by RB. So this is the base DC current we are going to set, we are going to fix for the biasing where it will be depending on VCC that is a constant DC power supply minus VBE. VBE is typically 0.7 volts for a silicon transistor divided by RB that is the resistance what we are going to choose. That is how we can fix IB. Similarly, we have two more parameters here that is current IC at the collector and VC is the voltage. So if you apply KVL at the collector circuit, collector circuit means from VCC to this collector point and then to ground. If you apply KVL, VCC minus here one more uh, voltage drop is there that is ICRC minus this voltage VC is equal to 0. Now we can get the expression for VC as VC is equal to VCC minus ICRC. So we can take this is one expression and this is the other expression for the analysis. And the current IC can be written as beta into IB. Here beta is the current gain parameter and the relationship between IC and IB lies like this. Beta is equal to IC by IB. This beta will be constant for any transistor. By using this beta or current gain, so we can find out IC and IB. And now the thing is that we need to keep this IB constant and we need to keep this IC constant, we need to keep this VCE constant. So these three are the DC values we need to keep constant so that we can fix a operating point for the transistor to operate as an amplifier. So for that, if you look at the output characteristics of this amplifier circuit, this IC is the output current. As I said in a common emitter configuration, this is the collector terminal at the output side. We are taking output from the collector terminal. So current flowing through the output terminal is IC and voltage at the output terminal is VCE. So as VCE increases, how IC is going to increase is the output characteristics. Output current versus output voltage. So here you can see this current IC is increasing as VCE increases up to this level. From here onwards, IC becomes constant. This constant IC region will be called as the transistor is in active region. As increasing IC up to here we can treat it as transistor in saturation region. So we need to make use of this active region and we need to fix any point in the active region where actually at that point we have VCE and what is the value of IC we have at that point. If you keep IC for this value and VCE for this value, this becomes the operating point of the transistor. So to find out this operating point on this active region, we need to go with this method. Suppose if this parameter is 0, IC RC is 0, we can get the maximum value of VCE in this expression. So if this IC RC is 0 or IC is equal to 0, VCE becomes VCE maximum is equal to VCE. So by taking this, we can say somewhere here, we are going to get the maximum VCE as the point VCC. VCE can reach up to VCC. That is what the meaning is. Similarly, when VCE is equal to 0, output DC voltage is 0. So the current IC maximum we can get is VCC divided by RC. That is also the maximum current somewhere here we are going to get as VCC by RC. So if we are going to join these two lines, this will be called as DC load line. This is DC load line and where actually this meets our output characteristics, this point will be called as Q point or we call it as DC operating point. And from here, we are going to get what is the value of IC, DC value of IC and what is the value of VCE we are having. So, we need to keep this IC constant and VCE constant so that obviously for a constant IB this curve we are going to get IB is constant from the biasing. So this point is the operating point of the transistor 
which is amplifying. This is how we can bias the transistor to work as an amplifier by fixing the Q point. This will be called as DC load line. So you can see here I have marked in the blue that is a DC load line getting from these two expressions IC E maximum and IC maximum and where actually this meets on the active region of the characteristics output characteristics will be called as DC operating point and this is the DC value and VCE value. For any transistor beta is equal to 100 and we are uh, having RC is equal to 1.5 kilo ohm and VCC is equal to 10 and IB is equal to 30 milliamps. We need to find out the other parameters VCE and IC that is the output DC current and the output DC voltage which we are going to fix in the operating point. So first what we need to do we need to find out IC and VCE we know that IC is equal to beta into IB by that IC is equal to 3 milliamps and VC is equal to VCC minus ICRC from that we can find out VCE as 5.5 volts. So somewhere here if we take we are going to get the point as 3 milliamps here and 5.5 milliamps sorry 5.5 volts as we see here this becomes the operating point. So which is marked here you can see this is 3 milliamps and this is 5.5 volts. This is how we can solve the operating point problems on any biasing technique also. In the next video let us see other biasing methods collector to base bias and voltage divider bias. Thank you.